J.J. Gibson believes that the input to the visual system is much richer than originally thought. So much so that for him, perception is a direct process with no need for processes which transform or supplement the incoming data. Gibson points out that in real life, we're not normally looking at isolated objects but at whole scenes. The eye therefore receives a complex pattern of light made up of different colours and frequencies of light reflected from a variety of surfaces. Moreover, this pattern of light continually changes as we move through time and space. Gibson calls this pattern of light an optical array. He believed that perception and movement cannot be divorced from one another. As we move, so we are constantly receiving different inputs on the retina which provide us with new information. Through studying the problems faced by pilots when taking off and landing during the Second World War, he proposed that pilots judge speed, direction and height through the use of optic flow patterns. These patterns are experienced not just by pilots but by all of us as we move around our environment. As we move forward towards an object, particularly at speed, the object itself appears to remain static while everything else radiates away from it. The constructivist account sees the information received through the senses as impoverished, requiring us to interpret it using our own knowledge. But Gibson believes that the information we receive through the senses is rich and complex, allowing us to perceive the world directly. Look how texture changes in this scene. The nearer objects are larger and more spaced out, whereas the further objects are smaller and closer together. If we add movement, texture expands as we get closer and then recedes again as it passes by. This invariant flow of texture is processed by our sense receptors automatically, allowing us to perceive depth directly rather than having to infer it from cues. Gibson also believed that abstract properties of things and events are also directly perceivable. He put forward the concept of affordances, that is, properties of objects which are meaningful to the observer and which he claims can be perceived from the pattern of sensory stimulation alone without recourse to previous experience. One of these affordances is graspability. Whilst on holiday in France last summer, I was lazily sitting in a chair reading a book in the sun. Suddenly, my attention was drawn to movement to one side. I looked down and to my horror saw a large snake advancing towards me. My first instinct was to frighten it away by throwing something at it, and I looked around for a suitable object. Bending down, I picked up some stones and threw them at the snake. According to Gibson, the graspability and throwability of stones was directly perceivable to me. I didn't attempt to pick up and throw the nearby shrubbery or the door of the villa. I was able to perceive which items in my immediate environment were capable of being grasped and thrown without having to consult any previous experience. For Gibson, there is no distinction between sensation and perception. And so we have come full circle, back to our original question. Can perception be explained in terms of sensation?